Let's talk greenwashing because you have a parliamentary debate on this today. The term originated in the 1980s. Put in your own words um, how to describe the behaviour of companies which do this greenwashing. Well, it's if you're buying one thing and getting something completely different. So you think you're buying <coughs> a fund or you might be, It's easy to look at this from a company. Say you're buying shares in BP. For example, now BP were making a big thing a year a year or so ago about their green credentials. They're putting solar panels on all the top of their service stations. We're really green, but the point is, ninety six percent of BP's uh, yeah, their turnover is derived from oil and gas exploration. Now, I'm sure BP want to transition to lots of other areas, offshore wind and the like. But that's you know, to give that gloss that we're a green company, yet you are uh, heavily involved in the exploration of fossil fuels is kind of a green wash to a company. And we've seen other examples like this, for example, McDonald's who switched to paper straws, which are not recyclable, uh, or Volkswagen, the famous one, of course, where it's actually cheating its emissions tests. So we want to make sure people, what people think they are buying, they're actually buying. So people who want to invest based upon their principles um, or indeed want to contribute, what their money to contribute to decarbonisation, making sure those, those stocks or those funds are sometimes these money is going to manage funds who then make choices of investment based upon those carbon credentials. It's, and it's having independent verification, independent standards, independent metrics so you can decide whether a stock or a fund is actually that green. What are you calling for in your debate today for those things that you just listed to, to be implemented in, in, in some way? Yes, very much so. And I think people generally recognise we need to do this. It's just quite complicated. How do you measure one company versus another one in terms of its green credentials? Because everybody will say, well, I'm, our company's really green and we're going to do X, X and Y by this point in time. But it's being able to independently verify that and setting proper milestones for the decarbonisation of different organisations and also the supply chains, lots, lots of things you've got to take into account. So. What we need is our international standards, so we can all see <clears throat> the uh, the green credentials of a particular company or a particular fund, which is just investment in a group of companies, really. So that's what we need, so we can all internationally decide uh, what where these companies are going, whether <clears throat> they truly are meeting their own green statements. I think there's another key point to this as well, of course, is that what can happen in the future is you invest in one company, and that company in the future might be worth an awful lot less because this is not decarbonizing, and it's something called a stranded asset. A good example of this, if you'd invested in U.S. coal producers, for example, the top four in 2010, uh, the market capitalization of those businesses is now 99% lower. So you lost a fortune by investing in those companies 10 years ago. So making sure people are investing in something they really understand is going to be future proof in terms of decarbonisation. The Competition and Markets Authority are going to get tough on this in the new year. I think everyone would agree with what you say and what they are trying to do. They, they, they say they're going to take action against offending firms, but how are they going to know? They can't investigate every company who claims they're green and ethical, can they? Well, there are new rules coming in. The government's brought forward new rules. It's called the taxonomy, which is a bit of a complicated word for saying it's just a way to uh, categorise certain companies. And it means companies, for the first time, have to put in climate risk financial disclosure in their accounts. Bigger companies, this is from April of next year. So we'll be able to see the bonnet of these companies, see what, climate, what, how, what their exposure is to future climate risks and whether they are truly contributing to decarbonisation or haven't even start, set foot down that path yet. I think most companies know they need to do it because it's expensive and, uh, and also it's easy for people to make bold claims and not actually deliver on those promises. So it's all those things. But the key to this is transparency and the government's legislated for that, but also then it's setting those metrics so we can all understand that data, so you can understand um, got, and be able to compare one company with another. So a labelling regime, for example, so you can see how uh, whether this company is transitioning, this fund is transitioning to net zero, whether it's already net zero, where it is on that path, so people can make informed judgments. And, and finally, 
For those of us who want to buy green, buy ethically, is there any way we can know right now if what we're being told is the truth? Well, I mean, there are people already, decent companies, decent funds, who are, um, you know, are managing funds that are more focused on on the environment. And there's lots of clever people within those funds, within the city and stuff that are looking at this. So I don't think people need to be, uh, you know, too sceptical about some of the claims that are going around. So try to use our, our advice, try to use a decent uh, advisor, manager, to a fund manager to be able to um, understand your needs and then uh, hopefully meet uh, the investment recommendations they make will meet those needs and meet those criteria and your, and your principles. So I don't think we need to be too suspicious about everything, but nevertheless, we want to make sure there is an objective framework so you can, people can properly judge and see for themselves what is green and what is not green.